So welcome to our Mimics walkthrough. We're going to segment an abdominal aortic aneurysm today from a contrast CT scan. We've got our anonymized AAA DICOM data set here on the desktop. And if you look through, uh, you'll see all of our DCM files listed right here. Now this is gonna be our working folder where we uh, will store our files and we'll go ahead and open up our Mimics Materialize Innovation Suite. This is the medical version, and if we start a new project, we can then open up our DICOM data set and make sure we're in the right folder and go ahead and click Next to import. This can take a little while, so we've sped it up for you. But Materialize is pretty fast at importing. Once you've got this, we generally uncheck all of this, these studies Make sure we've got the one we want, click only the one that we want, and then import. Always double check that you've got the series that you want. Uh, Mimics gives you a chance to do this, and also to check your orientation markers. Not that they're really critical at this point. This is a good time to adjust your windowing. You can do this manually via the histogram bar, or you can use the right click and drag method to adjust to a windowing of your um, preference. You'll notice here that we've chosen a CT scan that's been soft edge filtered. If you have an acquisition that is hard edge filtered, you may find that it's not suitable for segmentation because of a lot of scattering artifact. The next step will be to use a threshold function to select the areas that you're interested in. This is the green button here. We'll just move the log window out of the way. Um, but this will have some presets which you can use if you're segmenting bone, for example. Um, there is a nice function here that picks out the skin. Um, but what we're going to do is to choose a custom threshold filter. Um, and you can either enter manual values or you can do this using these slider bars here. Move them until you get the capture of every area that you're interested in. Don't worry if you get a little more tissue than what you intended, we can post-process and filter that out in a few moments. You'll notice this button here in the 3D preview window. This will give you a fast reconstruction showing you the area that you've segmented out. This is a really nice function of Mimics. It does use a fair bit of processing power so you can turn it off if you like. What we'll do next is we'll then crop the region of interest so that we only capture the area that we uh, want to process. For aneurysm planning, what we generally want is a region above the renal arteries to the femoral bifurcation. We don't need any of the tissue that's anterior or posterior to the aneurysm, and we also don't need to capture the kidneys, so we will go ahead and remove those using the crop function demonstrated here. Now we can manipulate our 3D model using the right click and drag function. If you want to zoom in, then hold down control while you drag with the right mouse button and to pan, then hold down shift. You'll see here that the vertebral column is captured along with the aorta. And the reason for this is that there's a little connection which we'll zoom in on. And the way to remove that is to use the slice edit function. There's a single slice edit and a multiple slice edit. So we're gonna use the multiple slice edit tool here. Make sure that you've chosen the remove selection. And I like to use the lasso function to define our removal segment. So you see here that there's some areas where the vertebral body is very close to the aorta and there's also a lumbar artery right there, which we want to remove. So with our lasso function, we will select out the vertebral body and this will mark an area that we're no longer interested in. We can then move up and down. Uh, we can move away a few slices and do it again. And what the software will do is to interpolate an area between the two. So you'll see that in this 3D preview as that black segment. And it's also shown here in the axial views. So we can go around and do that a few times um, at multiple levels and you'll see that that band will grow and it will get bigger. 
Remember to click apply when you're finished, otherwise it will forget that you've made this selection and everything will revert back to what it was before. Now we use the grow function to select our main aneurysm and we generate a new model or a new segmentation um, and you'll see that that's demonstrated here in yellow and the old one is demonstrated in green. We can pan through and see which segments are in the new model and which ones are in the old model and if you feel like it you can then go ahead and rename these models. So as we zoom out we see that there's still a bit of vertebral body here so what we're going to do is go through exactly the same process and remove that section as well. Now having done that, I now see that we've got a nice model, but there are some branches here that I don't think we really need, the celiac axis and the renal arteries and the internal iliac artery at the back. So what I'm going to do is use the edit slice function, and this is a really neat trick. If you go into the perpendicular plane of your vessel and then really just erase one slice using the lasso tool, then what that will do is that will disconnect that slice from the rest of the model. And you can then use the Grow Region tool and maintain the area of interest being the main body of the aneurysm and you will lose the branches distal to the point where you cut that slice off. So there's our Grow Region tool in action and you can see our model now has the renal arteries cut off just before their bifurcations. The excess part of the celiac axis and SMA has been removed. However, there is still a little bit of the celiac axis, particularly that musculophrenic branch, which I'm finding a little bit annoying. So what I'm going to do is to press Control Z, undo that last grow region, and do a few more slice removals in order to clean up the model. I'll go through this a few times, so I'll speed things up whilst I clean it up and then you can see the final result here in red. So this is our completed and edited model. So what I'll do next is to create a part by right clicking on the red segmentation mask and we'll use the standard settings. This will calculate a 3D model for us. We can turn the visibility on and off. And the other thing is you'll see there are contour lines. These are the outside edges of the part that we've created overlaid on top of the segmented mask. So if we turn uh, everything off except for that contour line, we can compare it to the edges of our uh, anatomical aorta. And it looks a little bit rough. We're going to wrap this, which creates an outside shell. This removes some of the internal hollowings. And if we turn off the first part, uh, then you can see the smoother wrap that has been created. I'll just point out this divot here that you can see on the model. Uh, this is because what we've picked up is the contrast lumen and there is a rim of thrombus within the aneurysm sac which hasn't been picked up by the segmentation program. If you want to capture that you'll need to do it manually but uh, for our purposes we just want the hollow lumen that will do. Now you can make this smoother using the smooth function and you can adjust the settings here. Uh, in order to uh, make it more smooth or less smooth as you desire. The only thing to keep in mind is that if you make it too smooth, um, then there are some branches which will become very small and essentially unprintable. Um, you probably don't want to overdo it, so I'm going to go back to the uh, suggested settings. So having created our wrapped and smooth model, what we'll do is go back and check the contour lines to make sure it matches up with what we think the anatomy ought to look like. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, if you're not happy, then what you can do is to use the contour edit tool. Um, so we can right click there or choose it from the menu. Uh, you'll need to choose the model that you want to edit and then you can actually push and pull. Once you're happy with the contour edits, then you can go back and preview your changes in the 3D model. Uh, we can spin that around and you can see if we've made it all spiky. 
I don't particularly like that so I'm going to undo all those changes. So having done that we're now ready to export our model to an STL file ready for printing. So if we right click on our part and then just choose STL plus you'll need to check where you want to save it to and you can also change the file name but if you just click finish then that will save your model and we can see it right here in our folder and we'll open that up and see that it's ready for printing. Now if we want to do any more editing then we can open the model in Mesh Mixer or 3Matic if you have that um, and do whatever you like with it. So that's the end of our tutorial and walkthrough. Hopefully you've found this useful. If you have any questions then please feel free to leave some comments and subscribe to our channel. Thanks.